Hello and welcome to an Oscar special from Keys. Our two film fanatics, Tom Percival and David Barker, are here to talk about the eight nominations for Best Picture at this year's 87th award ceremony. First on the sofa is David. Now let's talk about the first nomination, which was American Sniper. So American Sniper is a film by Clint Eastwood. It's uh, about a, the American Sniper the title. He was a four times Iraq War veteran and he's sort of prolific for having the highest kill sort of um, list in the soldiers from that time. Um, it's, it's a very efficient film. Clint Eastwood's known for putting films out. He's into his 80s now, but he still puts out like two films a year, which I think is quite remarkable. But other than that, I don't think there's a lot to sort of recommend about it. It's, it's very good at what it does, but what it does has been done before, and it's, it's not that interesting. It's, it's decent, but it's not remarkable. It does have some big names, Bradley Cooper and uh, Sienna Miller. Yeah, I mean, they do a decent job, as I say. It's very efficient, but you know, Bradley Cooper's nominated for Best Actor, but I think there's perhaps better people that could be nominated there. That's not to say there's a bad performance, but I don't think anyone excels particularly here. OK, then, The Imitation Game. Mm -hmm. So this is Stars Benedict Cumberbatch. This is the big, um, one of the big British films of the year. It's, I reviewed it um, back in November for Keys, and I, I really enjoyed it then. I still enjoy it now, but I think there's, there's better titles out there. It's very good at what it does, but what it does only goes so far. Benedict Cumberbatch as well being nominated for... Uh Best lead actor. Yeah, he does a really good job, but I think it's, you know, like, with that familiar with Benedict Cumberbatch doing a good job now, it's sort of, you take it for granted a bit, and I think he's done better performances. I don't think this is his finest hour, but it is a great performance. Okay. Birdman. Birdman, that's for me, is one of the strongest films. It's a really sort of flight of fantasy. It stars Michael Keaton as a um, previously um, a superhero star who sort of turns his back on that. He's trying to make a big comeback through theatre and it's all about him. It's like, well, what is it to be self-worth? And I think it's a really traffic thing. It really blends sort of fantasy and all the stuff. It's like, what is theatre? What is film? I think it's a really great film. OK, then Selma. Selma is the, um, the story of uh, Martin Luther King and his um, march for the right for people to vote freely. Um, it's, I think it's one of the stronger biopics at this um, Oscars. I think um, David Oliavo gives a great performance. I think it's, um, it's really good, but again, it's, it's very sort of manufactured for awards. So it's, it's great, but it's not the strongest one there for me. And Boyhood. For me, this came across a bit dull, just reading the synopsis. One-line synopsis, not a lot to it in my opinion. Well, I think that's for me it's what great is. It's not particular about any of it. It's about life, you know. It's um, a boy growing up for 12 years. It doesn't sound that remarkable, but it just drags you in. You know, the film's, you know, two hours, 40 minutes long, but it doesn't drag at all. It's just such a great film about life, about growing up, and I think it's something that pretty much anyone can relate to. Okay. Uh, the Theory of Everything. The Theory of Everything is the um, Stephen Hawking biopic. Um, I really like James Marsh, the director. He's done some terrific documentaries in the past. He did um, uh, Man and Wire. He's done um, Project Name. They're great films. I don't think this is as good as them. I think this is one that's really geared towards, you know, making you feel good. It's really geared towards the awards, and I think that takes it away from it. But it is a good, feel-good film, and the performances in it are terrific. And the Grand Budapest Hotel. I think this is the most entertaining film of the lot. It's a really good, fun film. It takes place across multiple times during but the um, centre of its own World War II, just before World War II. Uh, Ray Fiennes, I mean, he's not done a lot of comedy before, but he's, he really excels. He's just torn perfect in this. It's a really fun film. Uh, and Whiplash, finally, the last nomination, Whiplash. Whiplash, I think this is perhaps the smallest of the films. I think it's definitely been made for the cheapest, so it's perhaps not got the publicity it deserves, but it's a really terrific film. J.K. Simmons is fantastic in it, but it's just such tense. I mean, the editing's incredible. It's got the most tense, atmospheric, t 15 mi final 15 minutes of a film. And it just goes all out, and it's a really phenomenal film. Joining me on the sofa now is Tom. Now, Tom, let's talk about American Sniper. Uh, this is probably the film that I felt the most ambivalent about. Uh, when, I, when I first found out what it was about, I thought, I'm not going to like that. It felt a bit jingoistic to me. You know, that America, you know the rest. <laughs> um, but no, when I actually watched it, it was, 
it presented that, it was like that. It did present that sort of America, you know, soldiers fighting, war's great. But at the same time, it did have an element, just a small element of, you know, war is terrible. And it wasn't enough for me. I didn't, I didn't like American Sniper. Okay. And the Imitation Game. Imitation Game is actually very good. I really enjoyed it. It's the film that was probably most tailored to my tastes. I enjoy. I enjoyed the Alan Turing story. I enjoyed the Enigma Code. World War II is always a fascinating place to make films. But it just there was just something about it to me. It was more of the same from Benedict Cumberbatch. We've seen him play these clever, brilliant, but a bit damaged characters before, and it just didn't have enough for me to make it. I don't think it's going to win. More of the same, then. More of the same. OK. Birdman? Oh, I could talk all day about Birdman. My problem with Birdman is that it is more pretentious than a man in the northern quarter with the biggest beard you've ever seen telling you about prog rock from some band you've never heard of. There was just so much of it, and I get a lot of what was in it, but I just didn't enjoy it. Yeah. OK. And Selma? Selma. I absolutely loved Selma. I, it was the last film I got to see. It was really moving. When I was watching it at times, it felt like I was actually watching historical footage instead of a film. Of, of, you know, instead of a film. And Boyhood. Now, when I read the synopsis for this, it was a bit vague and a bit plain. Well, th well David is right in when he said before that Boyhood is a film that's about nothing, and that's sort of what's great about it. But unfortunately for me, a film about nothing is that entertaining. It didn't do it for me. And the theory of everything. I love the theory of everything, but yet again, another biopic, and it's just the tailor to me. I mean, I was crying during the trailer. You know, this film, when I saw it, I was like, I know I'm going to love it. And there's a bit of confirmation bias there. The Grand Budapest Hotel. Uh, yeah, I struggled with the whimsy of the Grand Budapest Hotel. Mm. There was certainly some stuff to enjoy, and it was funny in places, but I don't really understand what about it. Re there was no punch to it to me. It was like the cakes in the film themselves. It looks nice and it's sweet while you eat it, but there's nothing really filling to it. And finally, Whiplash. I adored Whiplash. This is the film for me that should win the Best Film nomination. It is absolutely fantastic. David is completely right when he says that the last 20 minutes are some of the most gripping, intense cinema you've ever seen. It is wonderful. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit more about Birdman first. I'm going, to leave, I'm going to open this up with David, because David, I think, is a bigger fan of the film than I am. Yeah, I think it's, it's a film that does a lot of stuff really well. I think one of the greatest achievements of it is the way that the, um, the steady cam work in it is just sort of seamless. I mean, it's, it's not all one take, but it's very tightly edited together, so it just seems like this... Um, thing that just flows through, and I think that's really good of sort of the narrative. It's you know it's about the sort of the panic and all the sort of that of behind the scenes of theatre. So it's the the way that it seems to flow. I think works quite well with that. For me, it's you know it's a film about sort of trying to achieve greatness. It's about what is greatness. You know, it is being in a superhero film a bad thing. You know, is being popular a bad thing, and what is a sort of artistic integrity. And it does all those things really sort of quite well. Tom, what did you think? See, I felt the film was a lot less, a lot less ambivalent than David. I personally saw it as more of an attack on the film, the things that that film saw as being lesser art than the theatre. Um, Michael Keaton's character is ashamed of his past as a superhero actor, and he's constantly dogged by it. And I really didn't enjoy that. I felt that it was a film that was saying, "This is art. That isn't art." And I don't think films should be doing that. I think that's up to the viewer. Okay, let's move on to Boyhood then, David. What do you think of Boyhood? I think Boyhood is just a really phenomenal film. And, you know, it's a film about growing up. It's set over 12 years and it's filmed in sort of real time, essentially. But I think too many people are getting hung up on about that. It just moves along seamlessly. You never really tell when one year ends and when the next year begins, and that's one of its great steps. But it's just a film about growing up, about being someone, about finding your way through life, and I think that's something that everyone can relate to. And what did you think? Boyhood took 12 years to make. Did it? No, no, no. My problem with Boyhood is that, aside from the 12 years to make thing, my problem with Boyhood is that I didn't feel that there was a strong enough narrative in it. I appreciate that the film was trying to say every day is an adventure, and that's fine. That is okay. But for me personally, it didn't do anything for me. I get it. It's just not enough. It's a, you're talking about a two-hour and, two and 40 minute long film. Could I please have something happen? Whiplash. Whiplash is a really phenomenal film. It's really intense. I think perhaps more than any others actually needs to be seen in the cinema experience because it's that much of an intense film. J.K. Simmons is phenomenal. You know, it's just really intense. It's about, you know, what do you need to, what strengths do you need to go to? How much do you have to push yourself to achieve greatness? And it's like, well, is that something you really want to do? But it's just, just a flat out exhilarating ride. And it's, you know, it's a really strong, brilliant film. Completely agree with David. I think he's right on almost every single point there. It's, it's intense. It's charming. It's just there's so much about it. As I've said, J.K. Simmons, 
best supporting actor and norm for this. Deserves it every step of the way. He's absolutely wonderful in it. Cup just more to back up what David said, to be honest. Okay, now those eight nominations, you'd agree, were quite strong nominations, but there are films out there that you think should have been nominated that weren't. Uh, Frank, for instance. <sighs> Frank is this weird obsession that I've got now for the Frank side bottom. For anyone who doesn't know, it's Chris Spivvy's a fictional character. He wore a paper mache head and spat like this. He was absolutely, you know, he's a real guy, really interesting. This is Michael Fassbender playing that character, and it's sort of a loose adaptation of his life. Very, very, very loose. It just had so much eccentric charm, and I loved it, and I wanted more. And the music, I mean, there's a song that's just like, oh, Coca-Cola lady, going down tonight. <laughs> I mean, like, ridiculous stuff like that that just... Oh, so charming, so, so enjoyable. I mean, it just spoke to me. I really liked it. And you uh, were a big fan of Mr Turner. Yeah, well, I mean, um, Frank's an interesting choice, but it's, it's not one that falls within the, sort of, the Academy sort of stratosphere. You know? Mike Lee, the director of Mr Turner, he's had a lot of ses success with the Academy before, so you would expect, in many ways, for him to get nominated for it, which is, you know, for many people, one of his career best films. It's a, a film that stars um, Timothy Fitzball as JMW Turner. He's got a really fantastic performance in this that really carries the film. And it's, it's a really strong film, and I'm surprised not to see it, and I'm surprised not to see Timothy Spall nominated either. And what did you both think of the nominations for Best Lead Actor? I was slightly confused, actually, because just going off what David was saying, that Timothy Spall's performance of Mr Turner is... I think very good. I think he deserved a nom. I think the big, the big absence here is David Aiello from Selma. Um, you know, a, a film that's really put, carried by that central performance, and the fact that he's not there is is, 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 is un, it's unthinkable. I don't understand it. And another great performance I felt was Ray Fiennes in um, the Grand Budapest Hotel. He's not known for his comedy, but he really absolutely nails it here. So I think to sort of correct the list they've given us, it would be I think Bradley Cooper. Out, um, Benedict Cumberbatch out. I think they both do decent, but not phenomenal performances. I think Steve Carell, who is really terrific in Foxcatcher, but I think is very much more of a supporting role. So he gets sort of back to supporting role. And then we bring David Iwaii in, Ray Fiennes in, and Timothy Spall in. I think that's the list that should be there then. Now, moving on to the category for Best Actress, let's talk first about Reese Weatherspoon's performance in Wild. Well, Wild is, um, is very much it's an inspirational, true-life story about this woman who tracks a uh, thousand miles across the, sort of, the American wilderness. And it's very much a uh, film that rests on the central performance, so it's not surprising to see Reese Witherspoon nominated. I mean, she does a good job. It's definitely one of her better roles in recent years, but it does feel like a film a nomination that's arise because of what it is rather than how good it is. It is decent, but I don't think it's the strongest one there. Now, Tom, you really enjoyed Felicity Jones's performance in The Theory of Everything. I certainly did, yeah. I feel that despite all the attention Eddie Redmayne's getting, that she is she deserves that just as much. I mean, really, The Theory of Everything is a twofer. You know, there, there are two lead characters. There's Stephen Hawking, there's Jane Hawking, and she certainly carries him, if, if you'll pardon me, the, sort of the, the, the obvious metaphor there. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot there to enjoy in Jones's performance. I feel that people say that there wasn't a lot of tension in their relationship, but that, to me, wasn't true. It was almost unspeakable. Spoken, when she falls in love with the, bit, the, ner the babysitter, for example, there were certain things in there that were just heartbreaking to watch, you know, a woman who, who's really feeling some internal conflict. Now, you went to see uh, Two Days, One Night. Mm -hmm. What did you think of Marion Cotillard's performance? I think it's a really strong performance. It's really great. It's on, it's on the same level as her previous Oscar winning um, performance in La Vie and Rose. I think the Oscars with the, um, the Best Actress um, nomination sometimes like to throw a wild card in the... You know, um, probably years ago we had the um, lead actress from a more Michael Haneke's film, so here we've got the Dardenne's French film. So it's it's a really good performance, but it's it's a wild card. It's not likely to win, but she is really terrific in that, and that's one of her strongest performances in years. Now, what did we think of uh, Julianne Moore in Still Alice? Oh, that's not actually out yet. That doesn't come out till March. Me and David were just talking about that before. Yeah. It, we, we think it was look. We think it, this, this certainly looks interesting. Okay, Roseman Pike in Gone Girl then. Um, it's oh, Young Girl's a really sort of interesting film. It doesn't go where you expect it to at all if you're not familiar with the um, source material. I mean, she's got a really committed performance in this. I think she really goes all out at it, and that's why she's got the it's one of the few for, um, nominations for the film. It's, you know, it's a really intense performance, and she's not afraid to go wherever it takes her. Tom, do you agree? I certainly do. A 
And very quickly, let's talk about the nomination for Birdman. Oh, with um, Irinyatu. Yes, he's because he would be the director I of that. that name. Um, I feel that this was very strong. This is certainly a very strong direction. I feel there was, you know, there's a lot on screen there. I could see it winning. I honestly could. I think what Linklater brought with Boyhood is very different. But I think there's enough there. I think of the nominees, it's certainly one of the more interesting looking films. Yeah, I think all the acting is really well directed. I think there's a very sort of deliberate style in terms of camera work, which they're trying to do. So it's very, it ticks all the boxes in terms of the whole aspect of directing. So I think it may be a split with um, Boyhood getting best picture and this actually going for the best, act, uh, best director. And let's talk very quickly about Boyhood. Mm -hmm. Well, I think Richard Linklater, this is his big film. You know, He's been churning out quite a lot of decent films over the past, but I think this is the real one that people will remember him for. It's his sort of masterwork. So it's, you know, it's very up in the air whether he win it or in you know, but I think they're both the two strongest directing yeah. hots. My misgivings about, uh, about Boyhood aside, I do actually have to agree with David. I think this is Linklater's masterpiece almost. You know, you can't, despite my misgivings about the 12 years thing, you know, has it been done before? No, not really. You know, this is a this is a this is cinematic history essentially. And what about the imitation game? I didn't think there's anything there. I mean, yeah, it's it's nuts and bolts again. I think it's functional, but it's, it, there's nothing special. I don't think it deserves to win best director. Yeah, it's, it's definitely well directed and it's quite um, polished, but. I think there's films more noticeable out for, out at the moment for the um, direction, and I don't think this is the top in the top five. Okay, well, David, Tom, thank you both very much for your insight into the nominations for this year. Uh, be sure to watch on Sunday, the 22nd of February, to see who wins the prestigious awards, and you can join us for the post-award analysis during our normal film review slot on Keys News. Bye bye. <laughs>